Toronto's mayor, Rob Ford, who's in the middle of all this controversy. A lot of our Canadian viewers uh, sent me tweets begging us to talk about it. Rob Ford got elected uh, two years ago, and in the last two years, he has been one of the most criticized mayors, I think, in Toronto history. It's kind of incredible. I constantly hear uh, comments about him from our viewers. I get emails about him. And uh, a judge, a superior court judge, has just uh, made the decision to remove Mayor Rob Ford out of office. And the reason why he has made that decision is because he has uh, broken one of their uh, municipal conflict of interest uh, laws, or known as the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. Now, what I love is that Toronto is very, very strict about this. And I'll give you some uh, background information so you can understand why it got to this point. So back in 2010, uh, Rob Ford sent out letters using official letterhead from his mayor office uh, to lobbyists, basically soliciting money from them so they can fund his personal private football organization for high schoolers. Now, from what I understand, uh, this, this football camp organization mm -hmm. is supposed to be a good thing. It's charitable work. It's supposed to keep kids out of trouble. Um, and it's known as the Rob Ford Football Foundation. Now, again, this is something that he launched himself. This is a private thing. And he is not supposed to use official letterhead from his office to solicit money from lobbyists. But he did so anyway. After he did that, uh, Janet Leeper, who is the City of Toronto's Integrity Commissioner, filed a complaint against him. After she filed that complaint, mm -hmm. uh, the council voted to force Rob Ford to pay that money back to the lobbyists, okay? And that uh, amount was $3,150. After they made that decision, Ford did not pay that money back. He was reminded repeatedly about the fact that he had to pay that money back to the lobbyists, uh, but he refused to do so. In fact, he asked the councillors to reverse that decision. So uh, they had the opportunity to vote on that. Now, as someone who is involved in this and who has uh, you know, a financial uh, tie to this decision, yeah. he is supposed to recuse himself from speaking on the matter and voting on the matter. However, he failed to do so. He did not recuse himself. He gave this speech to the councillors before they made the vote, and he voted himself on the situation. And as a result, um, the, the councillors voted to reverse the earlier decision that would have forced him to pay that money back. Yeah. Now, when uh, uh, Justice Charles Hacklin found out about that, he ruled that uh, Rob Ford had indeed broken uh, the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. And as a result, he will have to remove himself from his office. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, it's also important to keep in mind that the judge did not make a ruling in terms of what he can do after his term is up. So his term yeah. was supposed to be up on December of 2014. Um, after December of 2014, if he decides that he wants to run again, he has the ability to do that. But in the meantime, he cannot run for any office for the remainder of this term. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it makes perfect sense that he'd be allowed to run again in the future. Mm -hmm. I mean, at that point, let the, the population decide. I, I'll preface my comments by saying there's a lot about Canadian politics I don't know. And so I'm sure that there's a lot going on that the, the people who, are, who have a very strong interest in this, they probably know more about what he's done and are opposed to him for various reasons. But I'm, I'm approaching this from the point of view of an American. So I'm comparing this to how we deal with corruption in America. But also, just strategically, he made a couple of very big errors here. First off, he effectively lost his job because of about three grand. Now, I don't know if it's American dollars or Canadian dollars, but either way, it's not a lot of money. He should have just paid it off, first off. And secondly, in regard to uh, voting with the majority to, to reverse the earlier decision, it ended up winning 22 to 12 anyway. So he should have done his research earlier. He could have recused himself and still easily won and avoided the impression of a conflict of interest. But I do think it's a bit interesting that you said that they, that they take it so seriously, corruption. That's definitely true. Can you imagine somebody, a major politician in America, losing their position because of something like this? That's why I decided to talk about this story. I mean, the vast majority of our viewers are in the United States, and I'm sure a lot of them are wondering why we made the decision to talk about Canadian politics. But I think that it's important to discuss what's happening in other countries and compare our own system to, uh, let's say, Canadian politics or, you know, what's happening in Greece, what's happening, you know, w with the financial sector 
character. That's all very important. Uh, so we can learn from those experiences and take away from them. So in this case, as I'm reading the story, I have to be honest, I know that he broke the law and I, I, I am in favor of the judge's decision. Mm -hmm. But as I'm reading it, I can't help but think about some of the corruption in our own country <laughs> and some of the ridiculous things that politicians get away with. And, and I've almost bec I've become desensitized. So as I'm reading this, I'm like, so what's the big deal? Wait, and that isn't the right mentality to have. When did he kill someone? I'm sorry. No, like that's what we yeah. do because in America that's what we do. Wait, like crazy things. When did he invade another country so yeah. private contractors can become wealthy? Like yeah. you know, we've seen such horrible corruption in our own country that it makes us desensitized yeah. to this kind of stuff. So it's a little inspiring to see that, that they care that they care and that an actual judge has made this ruling, um, you know, highlighting something that he did. And honestly, like look, I, I think that if it had just been because he did the three thousand dollar thing to do this charitable organization, that's not enough reason to lose your position. But I think that the way that he responded to it is more reason. The he fact that he very refused defiant. exactly. And so for that reason it makes more sense that they would eventually remove remove him from his position and give him a chance in the future to run for some other office. But yeah, like, so he has a quote, um, they talk about, uh, this comes down to left-wing politics. He says, this comes down to left-wing politics. The left wing wants me out of here and they'll do anything in their power. I'm going to fight tooth and nail to hold on to my job. If they do for some reason get me out, I'll be running right back. Um, and he continues to write or say, as soon as the next election, if there's a by-election, I'll, I'll be the first name on the ballot. So uh, let me just uh, talk about that. N Toronto now has two decisions to make, or one decision to make, and they have two options in that decision. The first one is to allow a counselor to come in and serve as you know, uh, his replacement until the end of the term, or they can do a by-election, and that would cost uh, Toronto about $7 million. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll see what happens with that. But in terms of you know, the financial situation in Toronto, it's also important to point out that there was a huge housing boom. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they were operating on a surplus by the end of uh, 2011. Okay. So maybe they do have the $7 million to do a by-election. I mean, of course, it's up to the people of Toronto to make that decision. Um, but he is not going to be able to uh, run okay. and, and try to, you know, and by the way, he's obviously going to attempt to appeal, but we'll see how yeah. that goes. So what I wanted to say about that was that he was saying that basically this is a witch hunt. Um, and the thing is that corruption is, is so much more rampant, I guess, in America that like if a Democratic mayor or senator lost his position because of this, I would be pissed actually. Like. $3,000, he's going to lose his position, but perhaps Canada, and, and look, I'm not saying we're better off. I think that Canadian, apparently, they have a better view of this, but maybe it's like in New York when Giuliani stopped the turnstile jumpers and that helped to ward off other sorts of crimes. Maybe if you take a zero tolerance approach to corruption on these little seemingly minor matters, it'll stop them from doing much bigger, much more important, much more costly corruption. So I guess I salute the Canadians in this case. Yeah.